Stephen, tell us, where does Tesla fit in the lineup of who's ahead on this technology? Well, Tesla is just one of many companies that have introduced what we call a level two automation system that allows for doing steering control and speed control on highways, but it requires continuous supervision by the driver. And that's likely to remain the case for the foreseeable future. Uh, I don't think their technology is anywhere close to what Waymo has been developing in recent years, for example. Steve, to that point, just, just talk to me how you see the industry shaking out. Waymo is a tech company. Tesla or, or Ford, et cetera, are automakers. If a tech company wins this race, does it, does it just use that technology and roll it out to all automakers, or, or are people going to use that technology exclusively just for their own cars and, and no one else's? I think it's a mistake to think of this in terms of a race and to think of it as a single market. It's actually a diverse collection of applications that are susceptible to automation. So for example, some companies are working on a taxi-like service, which is more of the Waymo model. Other companies are working on low-speed urban buses that would get people to and from transit stations. Other companies are working on low-speed urban goods delivery vehicles. And other companies are working on high-speed intercity trucking. They're all completely different from each other. And those other applications are likely to be the first ones that are able to make use of higher levels of automation. It's not going to be the personal passenger car that sits in your garage and you take out to go driving whenever you want. That's not where we're likely to see high levels of automation come into reality. So while the companies are, are sort of racing ahead with this technology and automation, Jim, we've also got the regulators, the infrastructure that needs to be in place on the roads, consumers' willingness to, to trust self-driving cars. How do you think about the timeline for all of this? I really agree. It's, it's way far in the future. If you look at it, uh, the industry, I think there's like $80 billion have been invested in autonomous drive technology uh, in the last four years. Uh, the, the reality is these manufacturers that are in it, it's a business, and they're making investments from a very long-term payback perspective. You know, right now, for example, the, the number one rated current automatic drive system is Cadillac, as an example, and uh, GM Drive is a, a leading group uh, that very well could, could usher in the future. And so I think that it's a mistake to think that a, a disruptor may come along and, and change the industry and more than that, the point you made of the regulators, uh, NHTSA is not going to leave allow, allow a few cars that are not really safe to, to drive on the freeways, especially when their mast is saying, well, they may have some fender benders, but at least, uh, you know, it won't be a terrible accident. The NHTSA will be very strong, like the FAA is, with airplanes. Jim, what do you make of the timing of Tesla's announcement today? Well, obviously, they uh, had a very poor first quarter sales. Uh, I think on uh, Wednesday, they're going to be announcing a fairly disappointing earnings uh, situation. Uh, and so the technology has always been the, the shiny object that they've used. Uh, I, you know, I, I believe in, in a Disruptor, and he's a great inventor. Uh, but this is a business. It's a large business now. And you can't just cover up uh, flaws in the business model or lack of cash flow uh, with uh, spectacular announcements that really uh, are, are pie in the sky. I'm, I'm quite skeptical of the timelines that he's established. 